Ajuri has a question for you in Abuja. Ajuri. Mr. Ogunche, you know, when we talk about sustainable development, we know that there is no sustainable development with it without the development of humanity being the first priority of everything we're doing. Now, we're talking about workers' salaries. You know, there's so much talk about the minimum wage, the national minimum wage, you know, uh, from politicians to, ordin to citizens to uh, CSOs. Now, should we be talking, for example, about a new national minimum wage when we have not nailed down a mandate on not just the federal government but state governments to pay the full entitlements of workers and pensioners across the federation? Um, I just want to ask you about that. How can we ensure that state houses of assembly, for example, uh, the National Assembly get together and nail down a mandate to ensure that no matter who the governor is, no matter what his political party is, that he does the right thing. Thank you. I, th I, think, I think it still goes back to what I was talking about before. Our general collective societal capability, comfort with living with abnormality, okay? Things that are patently, obviously, expressly not normal. The fact that we are adapting, we are adopting, we are normalizing, we are adjusting to these things, that is part of the problem. Look at what is happening in Nigeria. You see, and I want you to go around the world and see what is the difference between government political appointees and their own appointees and things, political elected officials and their appointees. And, go and look at the difference between their remuneration and the minimum wage. I mean, it's scandalous. It's scandalous. There was a fr president in France who came, I think Mitterrand, Francois Mitterrand. He came and said, I want to ensure that within the public sector in France, nobody is going to earn more than a hundred times more than another person in a month. He was trying to take it to the private sector, it didn't work. But I mean, you find situations here where some individuals are earning multiples by, me, by the millions more than other people within the same government. It's our ability to put up with this kind of thing, lack of capacity within the civil society to fight these things, to fight through the courts. We have great lawyers, big lawyers, because from, for the majority of us, we've been kept busy. I've said it here before. It's something you we call um, bukata. Something to keep you so busy, you have no time for anything else. How do you eat water, electricity, fixing your, you know, plumbing and everything, enough money to buy fuel? Right now, we are keen for fuel. Yet, that's why I talk about the lack of capacity to solve problems. Every Christmas, this, this um, shortage, artificial shortage, happens, okay? The people in government must know that there are some interests that bring... What is so special about it that it must happen at Christmas? Are we drinking fuel at Christmas time? Are we using more fuel? What is happening? Are we driving more, let's face it, at Christmas time, okay? But some people are doing this. Who will go after them? Who are these people? What are their names? It is this ability to put up with this thing that enables us to have how much? 18,000? And some people in this same government are earning 20-something million a month. It's not normal. So we must, we must get off the ground and start um, addressing the many toxins that are deeply embedded in our system and are, are getting more and more embedded as you go along. Okay? There are too many anti-governance, good governance, anti-development toxins that are buried in the Nigerian system of governance. And if you don't begin to take out those toxins one by one, two in a year, three in a year, all out battle, then we won't solve the problem you're talking about, the problem of, you know, the, this minimum wage. You know, it's small, it's dysfunctional. The only reason anybody can live on those kinds of wages it's because you are cheating, everybody cheating, you cheat your pastor, you cheat your in-law, you cheat your brother, you cheat your father, you know, everybody. We're, we are not living normally again. The cost of living Mr. imposed Mr. on us uh, is Mr. coming from, I, 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 I raised the issue. I raised the issue of uh, the national minimum wage, particularly in the context of 
the payment or non-payment in some cases of workers' salaries. What I want to ask you now is if Nigerians, and it's a big hypothetical because there's so much indifference in this country, but if Nigerians decided across religions, across ethnicities, across age groups, across uh, social strata, that they were going to unite to, 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 to determine that officials, whether they're in the National Assembly or in the State Houses of Assembly, must mandate governors and the federal government to pay the full entitlements on a monthly basis to workers. Uh, what would that process entail? And what would be your advice if such a, a, a process could even start? You need progressively minded elite to start it. Okay, it's never going to be started by the ordinary masses until you get into a chaotic revolution situation where the vulgar tribune will take over, the motor park boys and everything. But if you want to get these kinds of reforms, challenge the system within normal time, it's, you're still going to need the elites some of the elite to lead this. You know, all our human rights lawyers, because look, economic issues are also human rights issues for the masses, okay? What will happen, in my view, is that we should even first start by taking government to court. Many of the things that people are not doing in government, some of these things are crimes. If you sign a budget with your own hand to law, you sign it into law, and then you proceed not to execute that budget. You say that in my state this year we're going to spend 12 billion on agriculture, on that sector. And then as at October you have not given 2 billion. You are committing a crime. There must be, all these are brilliant lawyers, all these are SN. It should not just be to go and defend those who have been accused of corruption alone. They should also defend the fundamental interests of the masses when laws are being broken. Do you understand? A governor that signs a budget that I will spend 12 billion, 15 billion on agriculture, and he announces it and signs it, and, and by October has not disbursed 2 billion, or sometimes nothing at all, you are committing a crime. So let us find the energy within our system to challenge them, take them to court. Go and say you cannot do this. Do you understand? Take the central bank, the Mint, federal ministry, yeah. take them to court that this money you are giving us across the counters in the bank, and plus the bank, take all of them to court. This is a crime. Okay, we're going to have we to, won't take it. We'll allow you to continue on the line of thoughts. Let's quickly go on a short break. We'll be back after these messages. Join us again. Welcome back. How do we deal with this current situation where a lot of states are owing salaries? You have a Paris club refund meant to pay them the salary, uh, pay them their entitlements and even pay pensioners. But that has not worked to this point with the past two uh, Paris club refunds that were given to states. Well, I understand this is the last one, is this it? This is the last one. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> what? So, you know. Uh, because, you see, we had not done the right thing when the whole process of giving Paris Club money started. And we've finished giving it now, and, um, and, um, and we've reaped the consequences of knowing that we have a system that is heavily loaded with impunity. We know it. Those who gave the money know it. You know it. I know it. We gave it. Nonetheless, right? In those woolly, not very tight, um, do you understand, restrictive terms, we give, we give the money. And what happens in Nigeria has happened to the money. Some have used it a little better. All of them are probably almost certainly not used it to the letter and spirit of the understanding they have with the fair government. Okay? I personally believe that we could have spend some more time. It's not going anywhere. That money was not programmed for. Do you understand? It wasn't programmed for. It was discovered to have been overpayments and stuff and, and things like this, right? So if it wasn't money that you are seriously expecting and it happened to you, that money, you could take some more time and do front-end processing and things with one single aim. 
to minimize the possibilities of abuse with impunity in the execution of the spend. We so didn't we'll do say, that. So, so we'll say, where well, do we have... Yeah. We have to go. But see this thing. Imagine where you had already budgeted salaries into your budget and that money comes in. Couldn't you have used that for a special project? I mean, to just ensure that, but you're sure that your budget is working. Well, they said they didn't have enough money for, um, to pay salaries because of, because, 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 many becauses. <laughs> but um, that money comes. You could have treated your rights. You could have treated it like a special bonus. Use some of it. Even use others for projects that are oriented towards the good of the masses of the bottom of the pyramid economy it's more or less what we've done with oil really Mr. the oil money should never have got into our national budget it should Mr. have been a special money i'm afraid all those i'm afraid that we're running out of time uh, mr Bolaji is a sustainable development expert we always as usual thank you so much indeed for coming on the show to enlighten us about um, this very contentious issue the paris club last tranche has been released and uh, let's hope that the states are able to do the needful with it. Thank you for watching Sunrise Daily. I am Gimba Umar. I'm Neota Igbe. Thank you for watching. I am Ajuri Ngilali. Have a wonderful day.